Hey, I'm Reed from the Codex team. And in this video, I'm going to share 10 tips and tricks for Codex that you might not know about. And you won't believe what number nine is. No, I'm just kidding. But whether you're a new user trying to get up to speed quickly or a very experienced Codex user, I'm sure this video will be interesting to you. I'm going to share 10 fe small features, shortcuts, tricks uh, that will help you get work done quicker. So let's get started. So tip number one. You might know that I'm a big fan of hero cards and journeys, and the first tip is about that. So let's open this hero card here, and you can see it has quite a few subcards. That's the whole point of hero cards, to kind of collect a bunch of subcards together with a context. So I can use in this list, I can reorder cards easily, but what if I want to change properties of cards in here? Well, I can go into every individual card and update them by themselves. But this is quite tedious. What if I just want to quickly edit, for example, the milestone of multiple subcards? Well, there's an easy way to do that. You can click on this button, which will extract all the subcards into their own view. They are still part of the hero card, but they are now presented as kind of like its own view. And I can do everything that I can do usually in the deck here as well. For example, I can, I can apply different sorting orders and so on. But more importantly, I can use the bulk actions. So I can select multiple cards in bulk by pressing this uh, check mark here, or I can press B on the keyboard. And then once I've done that, I can use any of the bulk actions, for example, the milestone action, and just assign a new milestone to all the selected cards at once. Quite useful if you didn't know about it. All right, tip number two is about linking cards. So maybe you are building a, your game design documents on Codex and you want to build kind of a wiki structure where relevant cards are interlinking with each other. So you can do that easily. Let me open this card and enter a link here by typing the dollar sign. And if I do that, it will open up a proposal list of cards that I might want to reference based on the cards that I've recently interacted with. So I can use the cursor keys and the return button to easily insert that. So what if the card is not in the proposed list? I can enter a couple of letters, like a search term, to filter down the list um, and kind of look for a specific card. That's quite cool, but when I press space, the search bar closes which is a problem if I'm looking for a card containing a specific space. Seems impossible, but it's quite easy. So if I go back, I can just enter a underscore and keep typing. And now you can see it, it is proposing this card with location space art. And now when I press return, it's in there. I have a link. The link color will be based on the state of the, of the card. And if I hover over it, I can see who it is assigned to, uh, how much effort it, is, it has, what the priority is, and so on. And this is quite powerful. I can do that within sentences, so I can write pr pretty naturally sounding uh, game design documents and kind of link to each uh, aspect that is relevant right now. And I can already see on the game design document card kind of what the state is of this other gameplay feature that I'm referencing. So tip number three is about conversations. Conversations are a huge part of every project management and also of Codex. And in Codex, we have threaded conversations, which is really nice because there's always a specific start and end point for a conversation. And it's really clear when a conversation has been wrapped up and the topic has been handled. Multiple people can uh, participate in a conversation. And if you've been part of a conversation, but you don't have anything more to add to it, you can also remove yourself. We call that opting out, which means you signal to the team that you don't have anything more to add to the conversation, and you also won't get new notifications if there are more updates to the thread. So let's look at this conversation. I opted out here. I can opt in back again by writing a message. Then I will be automatically added again. I will also be added if other people mention me. But there's another way also. I can opt in without writing a message 
by just clicking on my portrait here on top. You can see it's grayed out, which means I was part of the conversation, but I'm not anymore. But I can just click on my icon and I'm back in. You see the card appears in the conversation list again. And it also works the other way around. I can click on my portrait to opt out. So tip number four is about managing your notifications. So let's open a deck and let's assume I'm interested in changes to cards in this deck. I can subscribe to any changes by clicking this eye icon. Now I'm subscribed and if any of these cards is edited, I will get a notification alerting me and letting me check up on what actually changed. What if I'm not interested in all the changes that happen in here? Maybe I'm more interested in a specific individual card. Well, I can also watch single cards. Let's open this card, for example, and go into the card history, and I will see the list of watches on this card. And by just clicking this eye icon, I'm adding myself to the people that will be notified of any changes to this card. It's super useful if I'm interested, not in a whole deck, but maybe in individual cards. So tip five is about quickly jumping to specific cards. And I can use the search bar for that. So let's say I have a specific card in mind. I already know its title and I just want to quickly navigate to it. So instead of doing a full blown card search, which shows me potentially multiple cards, I can search for the term that I know it will have. Let's say I want to look up the code convention cards and I can search for content or the title, but it's already proposing me as well specific cards that I probably mean. So in this case, let's jump to the C sharp card, can press return and I'm directly on the card without going through the um, results page or finding the card myself within the DAX backlog. This also works for navigating to the um, decks. So let's say I want to go to the location ideas deck. I could go into the full decks list and kind of uh, find it myself, or I can just enter location ideas and it will already propose go to deck location ideas and then press return. It jumps to the decks overview and to that specific deck. This is super useful for quickly navigating codex. So tip six is about searching as well. So you can see here my list of decks, and it's quite useful to assort the cards that I have in my project by these decks, which allows me to kind of to get some structure in there. But what if I just want to look at the cards within a project without this layer of decks? Well, I can simply search for the project. So we have a public uh, roadmap project for Codex. And if I enter the name here, I navigate to the to use the project. What it does is it shows me all the cards within that project without this layer of decks. And here I can do my usual sorting by effort, by priority and so on. I can even sort by deck and then kind of get the idea of uh, which deck they are in. All right, tip seven is about shortcuts. They are a ton of useful shortcuts in Codex. You can Press this button in the bottom left to see the list. Um, you can also type question mark to see the shortcuts. I'm go just going to show you a couple of ones that I like especially. The first one is pressing Q to just see your own cards. So I have here my stone with um, cards by multiple people. And I can just press Q on the keyboard and it gets filtered by just my own cards. I pr can press Q again and it will show me all the cards again. When I hover over a card, I can press space to set it in progress. If the card wasn't already assigned to me, it will be assigned to me on the first space press, and then I can press space again to set it in progress again. And when I press space on a running card, it stops the progress. Super cool if you're doing especially time tracking. Another thing that you can do is, if I want to quickly edit the priority of a card, I can just hover with the mouse cursor on the priority icon and just press a number on the keyboard, for example, two, to change the priority without going into the properties panel. And the same works for effort. So I can hover over the effort, press two on the keyboard, and it will update accordingly. Super convenient. Tip eight. So talking about shortcuts, um, if you sort by a certain criteria, for example, I'm, I'm having my cards sorted here by owner, 
you might have noticed that on the swim lane, as we call these, these areas, you can see the, a short overview of the total effort attributed to the swim lane in total. So in here, I have four cards and with a effort of four in total. Super useful for us. We use this during planning. For example, in our weekly sprint planning, we plan with 15 points per person. And then we can quickly tell if we go over our limit and over schedule by doing this. But I, what I want to show you is a couple of shortcuts relating to the swim lanes. So one is I can click on this check mark to select all the cards within the swim lane. What I can also do is I can click on a swim lane to add a filter just showing me that swim lane. For example, now I filter down to only my cards and now I can apply a different sorting order. For example, sort by effort. Tip nine is about checklists. So there's a high chance you already know about checklists. You can create checklists by using the syntax here with a minus and then square brackets. And then I get this checklist here, which I can modify without having to manually change the card text. I can also do that. If I go in here, you will see the checklist items contain these axes now. And I can just also do it myself. And you see this item will be checked now. A thing that you might not have noticed is when I check and uncheck these items, there's a small progress bar on my card itself, which fills according to the state of the checklist. So I'm sure if I do it now, you will notice. If there's no owner associated to this card, there's also a progress bar, but it's a horizontal bar. So this is quite fun way to keep track of the state of the checklists inside of a card without having to open it. All right, tip 10 for the grand finale. I'm going to talk about image attachments. So you can attach uh, attachments to any card. Um, usually, most often for us, it's images. And uh, what you can do, you can obviously drag and drop a specific image file on there. But what I often do is I just copy and paste directly from the clipboard. So on Windows, for example, there are also tools on, on Mac. Uh, you might have, you have this snipping tool, which allows you to quickly um, do screenshots. And I can just copy here, Control C, go onto my card and press Control V, and it will insert that attachment and uh, even add a inline image on the card without having me to deal with any uh, files or saving the image first as file and then dragging it in. I can just do it directly from the clipboard. If I want to, I can, um, if I want to reference this image, for example, let me say, I remove it, it's still here as attachment. And if I want to bring back this image, I can just reference it as exclamation mark. It will show me the list of uh, attachments available. And I can also insert a, a image like that. So if you already attached a image, uh, you can reference it as inline image on the card by just using the exclamation mark. And this also works inside of comments. So inside of comments, you can also add inline images and reference attachments. All right, and that's all. That's uh, my list of 10 tips and tricks for Codex. Uh, I could go much longer, but let me know in the comments which ones you would like to see in the next video. And also, I'm super interested in knowing which ones of these you didn't know about. Also, make sure to subscribe if you're interested in more videos like this where I share best practices for Codex. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.